Hey, I am David for Big Bits, and in this video we've got a uh, pretty big feature update with some PineScript inputs, and they have adopted one of the changes I've suggested probably now for over a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, it's pretty big in helping reduce clutter and make things a little bit more readable. We'll go over that in just a minute. And then they also added playlist on Spotify to help, uh, I guess, set the mood when you're trading. And you can always find all the what's new information uh, on all the new features that they have by using their menu when you're looking at the charts and going down to the what's new tab. You will have a badge notification icon up here if there are new items, but you can always just click on what's new and look at anything you've seen in the past. They'll usually link to their blog post, which I've already pulled up. Uh, and the first one here is all about their Spotify playlist, which uh, honestly, I'm not too interested in personally, but uh, if you're wanting to check that out, that's great for you. But the most important thing we're going to be covering on this video are input script or script inputs, and we are being able to group them now, which is huge. Uh, it helps organize this to make the end user experience a lot better when you're creating a script for somebody. And then there's also the inline parameter which allows you to save a little bit of space on the screen and also keep related inputs together and i'll show you what we mean here but uh just taking a look <laughs> excuse me just taking a look here and zooming in this kind of goes over everything we're going to be copying some of their stuff and i'll i'll show you on my screen not just from this image but how these things kind of work out we're taking their script here and we're using it as a sample here i'm not saving or publishing this you can get that information here and it tells you how these things work i'll explain that to you while we're actually doing it instead of reading it off the page all right so i've got my script pulled up down here and you will see we have these new properties for our inputs called inline and you create a value that you want to use to group uh, there's two different types of groups that we're looking at here when you're talking about the inputs we now have an inline group which keeps all of the similar items in line together on the screen and i'll show you exactly what that means in just a moment but you create this property value and then you set the other values the same on the other inputs that you want all within one line so let's pull up settings here this is where it's going to be you can see we have three different settings here zoom in we have the checkbox for the highlight you have the drop down and you have a color picker uh, and you'll notice that that is these three inputs here the enable highlight the highlight type and the highlight color so you can see by setting their inline properties on the inputs to the same value, it places them on the same line within the settings menu or the inputs menu. Uh, I, I tend to refer to those interchangeably. But one thing you'll want to know is if you do have a bunch of these that they do line wrap. So if we had another drop down here and it was too wide, it would start over on the next line. So just keep that in mind when you're designing it you might have to deal with that kind of line wrap and to deal with that one good way is to use the groups themselves not just the inline groups like you see creating these single lines of controls but also the uh the group headers but before i move on there is one more thing about the inline that you need to know is that if you do not provide a idle uh, then it will not show up within the line here. So you see there aren't, there isn't really a title in front of each of these controls. You just kind of have to guess what it's for. Uh, that's why the group header could be very important. And here we are choosing a date range. So we're picking our start date and our end date. So we have checkbox, we have a date and time picker as well. So let me just cancel out of this. I want to show you how we do this. There is one group called date range. You can see that amongst all four of these inputs. I'm kind of moving the cursor over each one right now. But there are two different inline groups as well. So you have the start period and you have the end period inline. So that combines those two controls in two different lines, but within the same group. Now, if we wanted to change this to where it was the, um, excuse me, if it was the 
uh, end period was its own group, and we didn't just do date range, we would have to come up with that as well. So let's change date range here on these, and let's try these out and see if this actually does what I want it to. And if it doesn't, it's going to probably ruin the whole video, but that's okay. We're just figuring these things out. We'll just call it start, and we'll do the other one as Take just a moment. Should probably just unzoom here. Now we've got a second one. Let's close our first one. Pull up our settings now. Now you can see there are two different groups. There is a start and an end group. So if you wanted to break things up even further, you could do that as well. You don't have to rely on all of these things. Kind of get a picture of how things actually work now when we break these apart. Now, there is one more suggestion that I have for them that I've also made pretty clear, and I think we might be able to see this in the future, and that is collapsible group menus. So they gave us the group headers that we wanted with the start and the end here, but if you have a whole bunch of groups with a whole bunch of inputs, you're your list of settings and inputs is still going to be super long and it can be longer than the page to where you have to scroll down just to see all the different values that you have. So what I have suggested is that they actually make the group headers into collapsible style accordions. Now if you're a web developer that probably makes sense. If you're not then you can just think of oh you can click on the header to make the fields a drop down area to where when you click on it you can see them and you click on it again to toggle it to where you can't see them, essentially similar to your actual drop down here you click on it and you can see the options you'd be able to click on the header it would expand the area showing the inputs related to that group click on it again and it would uh, dismiss essentially that area so that's one more thing that I would like to see just to help clean up some space, but the groups and the inline controls are really great, helping to save a lot of space. Should make the user experience a lot better uh, for those of you all who are developing and trying to make things friendlier and more understandable to the people you are writing your scripts for. This is huge. And if you are just an end user and your developer isn't using this and you're confused, out to them and ask them to do this. We might be going back and doing this on some of my own scripts, most likely during the summer once I'm done teaching my courses with the college right now. But for now, I did want to make sure to go over this with all of you all because this is a big update when you're talking about uh, Pine. And a lot of the times on my channel, if you've watched my videos, you'll know that I consider big updates to be uh, the updates that are impactful not just to the developer, but to the users as well. And this is a very impactful change that can make your script stand out from other So just keep that in mind when you're developing that this is a very helpful thing if you're wanting to develop scripts for other people or even for yourself. That way you can keep track of what you're doing. Because if you're like me and you have a bunch of scripts that you've written, uh, you don't always remember what every setting is for when you go back and look at them. So this is very handy to help you remember, oh, this is for this, and it's also for the same start period. Okay, that makes sense. So these are just things to keep in mind when you're developing. But I think that's going to be it for this video. If you did like the video, please go down and leave a like on the video. That helps a whole lot on YouTube. And while you're down there, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can get notifications on when there are new videos and new updates on TradingView. Also do some technical analysis from time to time and uh, some other crypto related videos as well. But that's going to be it for now, guys. Hope you all have a great day.